It's a new era at CBS News. Hi, I'm Scott Odd, and this is Bill Whittle Now and Bill. Nora O'Donnell, the relatively new anchor of the CBS Evening News, announced this new era from the CBS Evening News News Studio in Washington, D.C. It's now the first of the big three networks that's not headquartered for their evening newscast in New York City. Now, there, Nora O'Donnell herself has some connections in D.C. She lived there for many years. Her husband apparently is a restaurateur in that city, so you could see there's, you know, they don't have to commute as far. But this quote is what jumped out at me, Bill, and this was from uh, the uh, executive producer of the show who they stole from CNN, who used to run the uh, Situation Room at CNN with Wolf Blitzer. Uh, Jay Shaler says this, he, in a statement that they released about this, said that the move, quote, allows Nora to bring viewers to the heart of the story from the center of where everything is happening. Mm. Just just on the face of it right there, Bill, what do you think of this move to the center of where everything is happening? Okay, first question is, what is CBS News? Uh, am I supposed to know who they are? <laughs> it's, it's uh, well, you may recall uh, Walter Cronkite from the 1960s. Later on, uh, Dan Rather served in a role as a CBS News All I Evening remember News about anchor. Dan Rather is swearing that a fake document that was obviously <laughs> faked was true. He was part of this organization, was he? Well, but whatever they've really they are, turned they... the corner now because it's no longer Dan Rather. And they're in Washington, D.C., the center of where everything is happening. You know, one of the many things about this country that's unique, used to be unique anyway, and, and one of the things that made it not only unique but, but pleasant and uh, successful is that for almost all of its history, Washington, the capital, was essentially a backwater, and that's the way it should be. Uh, you cannot, I cannot think of another example. Certainly, uh, all of all of France rotates around Paris. All of Russia rotates around Moscow. All of Britain rotates around London and on and on and on you go. But the idea that the United States would have a, a commercial center, financial center in New York, would have uh, entertainment center in Los Angeles, have energy centers in Houston and Dallas, have aerospace centers in Seattle and all the rest of it, was an indication that this country alone among major nations in the world did not have all of its eggs in one national capital basket. And when the New York Times, or sorry, CBS News or whatever they are, says we're going to go to Washington because that's where the action is, that's where the stories are coming from, it is an admission, whether they understand it or not, that the world is no longer governed by economic principles now, now it's governed by political principles. And if they are basically saying that New York is no longer the center of the universe as far as American stories are concerned, then that's an admission on the part of people who've spent their entire careers and their parents and their parents' parents' careers in New York City saying that now politics become so immersed in American life in every single way, shape, and form that all of the other sectors of the economy don't matter since politics has infected all of them. So to the degree that they said that that's where they were the the news and the stories are coming from, I suspect they're right. But that's not a good thing. And the fact that CBS News is having a new studio or has a new anchor is about as, a, is about as relevant to me as, as uh, a, you know, some kind of oil change special down at Pep Boys and, and even far less relevant to people who are younger than me. I mean, CBS News still has a, like a, a memory, like a, you know, kind of like a G.I. Joe kind of a re recollection of this kind of patina of, uh, of, of credibility and respectability. But that's been gone since Dan Rather, certainly. And so who, who cares what CBS News is doing? Does uh, anybody watch CBS News anymore? I, I have a, a follow-up question here, but is there an oil change special at Pep Boys? Mm -hmm. Oh, my yep. goodness. Uh, can yep. we talk after the show about that? that that's Absolutely. the first breaking buy, news I've heard so far that's exciting. Buy, buy two and you get one free. <laughs> That's right. Oh, we're going to have Pep Boys signed up as a sponsor anytime now. So here's the situation and what CBS News is trying to address. Uh, they are in the back of the pack when it comes to the big three. And uh, so it goes... The ABC, big three, I take up... Sec I, I take well, up I'll, I'll clarify that in a second. I'll clarify that in a second. So ABC's World News Tonight, uh, then NBC Nightly News... And then CBS Evening News. So, uh, and here are the stunning numbers, Bill, the, the massive numbers of hum uh, Americans who are watching ABC, 8.8 .8 million viewers. Um, that's uh, NBC, 7.9 million viewers, and CBS bringing up the tail with 5.6 million viewers. It, that is roughly, I think, a majority of the 330 million Americans, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah. If, if, you, if you took new math in uh, schools... <laughs> 
which is why they teach new math in schools. Yes, I'm sure you can. How did they get such case. outsized influence? Like, why do people still care about this when even the best of the network newscast is attracting 8.8 .8 million view viewers on a nightly newscast? Two things happened. Uh, one of them was as we moved out of the industrial era and into the information age, all top-down centralized businesses have had to diversify or or die, uh, with the exception of maybe something like a like an aerospace giant or a tech giant or something. the The CBS Evening News is no longer relevant and hasn't been for a long time because of a, a big external factor and also because of a big internal factor. The external factor is the advent of the internet, which means I don't have to wait till 6 p.m. In fact, I'd rather not wait till 6 p.m. to find out what happened in the world today in a half hour. I get a chance to find out what's happening in the world at the moment in real time. And if something is out there that gets my attention, then I can watch as much news as I want to. So that hurt them, hurt all three of those uh, network newscasts. But the other thing that hurt them enormously was their absolute destruction of their own credibility in order to advance their political agenda. This is, this is, this is the crop that you sow when you decide that you're going to use your influence as a supposed news agency, not to report the news, but to suppress the news, invent the news, and push other stories of the news according to how you feel people should vote. And when you do that and you lose credibility, it's gone. And if you think about it, all CBS News at, and all the New York Times ever were at the height of their power, all they had to sell was credibility because you had the sense that if I read it in the New York Times, then because of the reputation of the New York Times and the size of the New York Times and the scale and, the, and all of their standards and all the rest of it, if I read it in the New York Times, then it's almost certainly true. And so what the New York Times and CBS Evening News had to sell was credibility. And they decided to kill the goose that laid the golden eggs. They decided to go short instead of long. And in exchange for the maintenance of credibility, they got, they got the Harry Reid option. They got a cheap victory that cost them in the long term. And this is what's happening all across the board. That's why they get 5 million people. They can move to Washington if they want to. In five years, they're going to get less than 1 million people if they last that long. I don't care that they're moving to Washington. It doesn't affect anything. It's interesting, Bill, because one of the th one of the reasons they say they moved to Washington D.C. is so that they can get more of the big gets, as they call yeah, them sure. in the news industry. It's those big interviews, and uh, so th their proximity to the White House and to lawmakers uh, will result in, I, uh, I imagine, a more entertaining news program, a more compelling news program. But it, it strikes me, Bill, that Washington D.C. is just now the center of everything. It wasn't the center of everything during the Obama administration or during the Clinton years. No, he made it the center. No, no, it, it, it H. became H.W. Bush or anything else. It just during the Trump administration no, is true. when CBS makes the move. No, that's not true. Uh, CBS well, is did. making the uh, CBS is making the move during Trump administration. There's no question about that. But that's because CBS News is ten years behind the times. Regardless, that's another reason why nobody's watching them, which is why it's like who 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 cares? I don't. It's just a historical thing. It's like saying that they moved a whalebone factory for for making corsets or something. It's like oh, how historically interesting, how quaint. Um, no, it was it was the 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 cart has to follow the horse, and the cart is hey, we'd better go to Washington because that's where all the action is. That's where things are happening. But the actual hey, guess what's going on in Washington? This is the only place that matters anymore. Really really became solidified with Barack Obama and things like Obamacare, where every single employer in the nation is now beholden to the whims of one guy or maybe one guy and one woman, and they are going to decide how many people you can employ, how much you're going to pay them, what you have to do for their health care, and if you don't like it, you have to pay anyway. And this intrusion of politics into everything is not only what's caused them to move to Washington, but it's also what's tearing the country apart. We didn't have these kind of arguments with our relatives when there was talk about what a tariff rate should be or not be. But now that they're telling you, this is who's going to be your doctor, or this is how fast you can drive, or this is what you have to wear when you're taking a shower for your own sake, a safety helmet is recommended and it'll be mandatory starting in 2022. Uh, now so you, you think this has nothing to do with the President Trump's oversized personality and the, all the these you know stirrings about no, of him? Of course not. No, of course not. What it really has to do with, if you really want to get down to the brass tacks of it, is the most expensive neighborhood in the country now 
is, is in outskirts of Washington, D.C. And I think the reason they're moving is because these New Yorkers, who are so used to being the spindle of the universe, are realizing that New York is no longer the spindle of the universe. And these people are determined to be where the spindle of the universe is because that's where the great cocktail parties are. And that's where your chance to rub elbows with the, with the big deal makers are. And so because these people are driven by excessive amounts of pride, that's where they want to go. And I don't blame them. It makes sense if your if your entire purpose in life is to see if you can get to a cocktail party so you can get a phone number so you can call a guy to get an interview with somebody who's a big political guy. Okay, then you need to be in Washington. But all of this is increasingly irrelevant. And and as the as the economic structures of this country begin to be eroded by government intrusion into everything. New York will become less and less and less important, Washington more and more so, unless Donald Trump can do what he's trying to do, certainly seems to me that he's trying to do, certainly what he promised to do, which is to essentially put Washington where it belongs, which is in the, in the status of a second-rate American city where the business of, of the government is conducted, and you really don't care too much about what goes on in Washington because Washington doesn't have that kind of power over your lives. So let's just say this new executive producer of the CBS Evening News calls you up and says, hey, Bill, I saw your show, mm -hmm. and uh, man, you're really speaking some truth to power there. We'd like to bring you in and spend a day, day and a half, and have you tell us what you think we should do with the CBS Evening News to make it the kind of news operation that America really wants and needs. Well, uh, listen, CBS News, let me save you... Uh you know, let me save you, uh, you want to bring me in for 18 hours? Let me save you 17 hours and 59 minutes. I can do this in a minute. If you want to make CBS News the kind of new news agency that people want to watch, then tell the truth. Just tell the truth and don't do anything other than tell the truth. Tell the truth and trust that your audience is smart enough to come to their own conclusions. If you could tell the truth for, let's say, I don't know, 15 years ought to do it, I guess. If, if, if 15 years from now, we look at CBS News coverage as simply reporting the news without spin, without selection, without cherry picking, without artificially amplifying stories that they, they think are, are bad for the opposition and suppressing stories that they think would be harmful uh, to their own side, then... Um, then you might have a, a, a respected news agency that people might turn to because it would have the credibility of offering a chance to say in the sea of information, this piece of information is probably more likely to be valid because we are long known for our credibility, but it's not going to happen in, in, in a week or a month or a year or five years. Credibility is something that can be built, but if it's destroyed... It can be rebuilt again, but it takes far longer to rebuild credibility than it does to build credibility for obvious and, and completely sensible reasons. And there's certainly not going to happen. This has got nothing to do with credibility. This move hasn't got anything to do with credibility. These people think that the, that the reason that their numbers are, are declining is because all the juicy stories are in Washington. It's like, no. Now, the juicy stories, you know where the juicy stories are? They're on, they're on Veritas. That's where they are. That's where the juicy stories are. If you really want to find out interesting Project things Veritas. about- That's right, about, about James O'Keefe's organization. You want to find out what's going on in Washington, I go to Project Veritas. I wouldn't think about going to CBS News if my life depended on it. It's just, it's, it's just another example of how far behind these dinosaurs are, which is very, very good for the country. Really, the only hope we have is, is the internet has done a lot of damage to this country. But the fact that we're having this conversation that's being listened to by anybody now is an indication that the, at the very least, uh, the internet has, be, has turned what used to be an information iron bowl into a colander. And now you can get your information where you, where you want to. Um, the, the idea that the reason their numbers are dropping is because Washington is where the action is, is precisely the reaction I would expect from a group of elitist, uh, vain, uh, wicked people who have no sense of integrity and therefore assume that the people who they're reporting to have, don't have any sense of integrity either. Well, sorry, Nora. But you know what, Bill? She does, she does have the picture of the Capitol now in the background when she when she says goodbye on the evening newscast. That I promise gives, I will have a I'll have a picture of the Capitol right here. Um, uh, that gives the credibility. Of, you know, the, of that, Congress. The, uh, you know, we got to. I know you're being funny about this, but that is exactly what it does. 
That's entirely the reason for it. You know, why do you think that you, these people are always shot? Uh, whenever you have a guest, you know, if there's a guest coming from Paris, the Eiffel Tower is in the background. And if there's a guest reporting from London, I can see Big Ben from here and all the rest of it. Why do you think they put the Capitol building behind guests when the guests are on news shows? Because it's saying this is a guy from Washington and he knows what he's talking about. So I could have a picture of the Capitol building behind me. And would it increase my credibility? I suspect it wouldn't because my credibility isn't based on graphics and it's not based on marketing. My credibility is based on the fact that I say what I think is on my mind. Some people are interested in hearing that. If I make a mistake, I, I admit it and I apologize. If, if it was a mistake that was made due to carelessness, I can't be responsible for mistakes that aren't. But fundamentally, I've, I've, I've earned my credibility and I certainly haven't sold it out for large amounts of money, which we can both attest to. So... <laughs> Well, uh, so, we should we should pause now and and wind things up by thanking the people who have provided those uh, amounts of money to us and made it possible for us to conduct this enterprise in the manner to which they have become accustomed. Uh, those are the members of BillWhittle.com. And uh, we've had more people join in the last day or two. And we just want to welcome you, uh, first-time viewers, who are seeing this and enjoying it for the first time, not just because you're watching it, because you could watch a lot of it already um, on the internet without on our website, without having to be a member. But you're watching now as a producer. Mm -hmm. And we value your thoughts and your ideas as a producer more than that producer guy over at the CBS Evening News. In fact, we interact with you in real time many times through the website. There's comments section. There's a blog there where you can create content. And of course, if you have any questions or ideas, we always have that contact button and we're very responsive to our members. I'd like to add one thing, Scotty, that we've never talked about before. And, and, and it's really important. If you are a member here, and you're you're producing this content you are keeping the the information circulation of the country alive you don't have to agree with what i'm saying you know you don't have to agree with me any of the time you don't have to agree with me all the time you don't have to agree with me at all but if you're supporting this organization you're doing it because you understand that the free flow of information is what success and happiness is based on and what a, and what a, a decent country is founded on and and the entire purpose of, of what is going on out there is to constrict to a very, very thin little capillary the information that you get as a, as a U.S. citizen so that you do what these people who have their fingers on, the, on, the, on this throat want you to do. And, um, and so regardless of the message, just the fact that you're supporting any kind of alternative media is an indication that you care enough about the free flow of information, you've got enough security about what you believe so that you can listen to somebody who you either agree with or disagree with and know it's gonna make you a better person. And we thank you for that. For Bill Whittle, I'm Scott Ott. Thanks for watching.